A good communication strategy is all about planning ahead. Anticipating what is likely to happen and not just what you would like to happen. Request your project lead to make proper time for some planning sessions. And as you might have realized, development cooperation people are planners, so they will love this exercise. The only problem is development people often don't give enough thought to the fundamentals of communication strategy. It's not the core professional expertise they're bringing to the table. What am I getting at? Well, for example, it doesn't make sense to conceive a strategy from the end, which is a typical thing to happen in development cooperation. Projects often start their thinking with the kind of tools they have available to them that are common or that someone in the team knows how to use or that they would like to use. If it's a social media tool, the incoming intern will know how to operate it. Well, you don't know that. Not all young people know a lot about social media. It's an assumption. And assumptions and cliches are killers for any strategy implementation. When should you begin working on a communication strategy? Communication strategies are usually predetermined when the entire project is thought up at a ministry on the basis of a proposal by an implementing agency. Why do I say predetermined? Because these documents usually mention the use of a certain communication tool without further consideration or elaboration. And this clearly affects your strategic choices. As I said, this puts the cart in front of the horse. In an ideal world, a communication specialist would be consultant, consulted to provide input during this first phase in order to avoid for that to happen. This, however, is usually not the case and it's the reason for project concepts tending to be full of conducive or non-conducive communications objectives and tools, causing a problem for you downstream as the project leaders at the implementing agencies take the project documents as sort of legally binding blueprints with not much leeway for substantial alterations. This is something you need to accept or find a nifty way to work yourself for your strategy around it. That being said, it's obvious that it's best to have your strategy meeting as early as possible. You want to make sure that you lay the foundation at the beginning of the project. Maybe you have a chance to convince your team to not print brochures as laid out in the project, project documentation because your target group could be functionally illiterate, as it happened to me once. And then also remember that you want to measure impact. To do that, you want to capture the baselines of the indicators at the beginning of the project intervention. If you, if you have a three-year project and you only start looking at your communication strategy after half a year, then the opportunity to take before and after pictures of construction sites, for example, is likely to have passed. And not just for taking pictures, the chance to record many types of baselines will have disappeared by then as well. Anyway, let's just assume you're hired as a junior communications officer and you're starting your assignment at the beginning of the project, when the project is also starting, which is not a common thing, but anyway. To get into gear with your strategy process, you'll have to begin by thinking about the six components of the strategy. And then, who do you need to help bring those components together? And which resources are necessary? Let's have a look at who you need to talk to from the steering side of your project. Each element of your strategy is going to require feedback, information, or approval of someone within the project, or higher up in your agency, or from your client side. If your project facilitates a network platform secretariat, it's likely that some of its stakeholders from a so-called steering committee must be consulted. Early planning ahead 
who should be involved in the creation or sign off of which parts is going to make the implementation process much smoother later on. Remember, you are starting your communication strategy, strategy with your project's overall goals. Make sure you fully understand these goals. Maybe ask your project lead to give you some insights on them. You'll be the one drafting the strategy. It's essential that you comprehend what your project is set up to do and what a successful implementation is supposed to look like. Also, think a bit farther ahead. The question who to consult with also applies to other components of your strategy and later stages of implementation. For example, does the organization that you work for that runs the project have a monitoring and evaluation unit? If so, is it common practice to consult with them for standard metrics? Do they have electronic data collection systems on the contract that projects are expected to use to gain a deeper understanding of the audiences and the engagement levels? Another point is whether your organization has a corporate communications department, maybe, that sets rules of engagement or has brand guidelines in terms of which logos are to be used or which social media can be installed on your computers. In my experience, internal processes in development organizations tend to be a bit bureaucratic and politicized, which can cause major frustrations, especially for newbies. However, if you better understand the rules and be appreciative of different departments, it gets much easier. For instance, project clients often have the expectation that they can freely determine what logos and websites will look like and which online conferencing tool they want to use, while the head of your IT department gives you very limiting instructions. You think, well, you start sourcing outside. But then the head of the procurement department disallows this because the rules of efficient use of funding say you must use approved vendors or the IT systems installed. This haggling around these issues can easily take six months. So once you have the pronounced wish to use certain systems, immediately start investigating on how feasible your ideas will be. What about external communication consultants and designers? It can be important to engage them at the beginning of the strategy process because you're going to need their help creating many of the activity you plan to include in your strategy. Often they are seniors in their fields of work and it's a good idea to ask for their perspectives before you move too far with your strategy ideas. The point here is to consider early who of these service providers should be part of the strategic thinking and who can be hired as an implementer later. Remember, bringing people in from the beginning to consult, inform, brainstorm makes it more likely that your strategy will be inclusive and that you get what you need from those who hold information and who have, the, have to approve the strategy. And often they also can very easily keep you from making rookie mistakes. What about project stakeholders? We're not specially set up for it. Development projects often keep away from the political situation around them, addressing technical aspects of development challenges. Being immersed in implementing the detailed plans of a project together with your colleagues can make you easily forget that development projects are always political on various levels. Projects bring substantial amounts of money into a, into a societal setting, impacting the political economy and their communications activity always carries values. Plus, donors want taxpayers on their end to be informed about the positive impacts of the projects. In other words, while your project might only roll out technical activity, its communication can never ignore the political sphere. Often, it will be good, a good idea for you to meet with the various stakeholders of the project to discuss your communication strategy draft. 
I promise you, you'll hear objections that you would have never thought of yourself. Speak with your supervisors and local advisors about which stakeholders to talk to and how to meet. There might be some that you have not thought of being affected by the project intervention and your communications activity, or those who need to be included because of their socio-political position. And if you're young in comparison to those stakeholders, you probably want to have a senior colleague to moderate the meeting with you. Well, and if your supervisor has concerns that a stakeholder meeting might cause major discussions that go way beyond communication strategy, tell him or her that that's actually what a good communication strategy needs to stand a chance for successful implementation later on. Good communications drives feedback and it starts already with the meta discussion about the overall communication strategy.